Hello there, person. Check it out. What we're working on today is making some crispier fonts. We're going to be baking up some crispier fonts for Wraithbinder's UI. Part of a overall general improvement to Wraithbinder's user interface. We're talking all the little windows and buttons and fonts, making them nicer, better looking, better resolution, higher quality. Let's impress people with this, shall we? Let's put some spit shine on this. Snip, snippy snappy it up. Starting with things like right there where it says floor two on the right side of the screen, which would be above my head for y'all on the, the stream. We're gonna start with that. How about that? The floor two text. It's, I mean, it's already looking all right, but you can see it's a little bit pixelated, right? Let's make it so it's super duper awesome. All the way crispy, high res. We're talking super high res. We're gonna work on everything today. Well, maybe like the, the text for the under the character, the text where it says level one, the ping time, everything. We're gonna make it all this look better. Even things like this where we go and we look at the settings. Look at that. See, that's kind of pixelated too. Because you check it out. If, if you really want to go pixel mode, you've got pixel UI. You can go, you, you can make everything super pixelated. <laughs> I can't believe I, this is crazy. It looks crazy. My aesthetic has changed as I made this video game. Yeah, I used to prefer these pixel UIs, but man, I really like the crispier version now. So we're going to make the crispy version super crispy. We're going to leave the old pixel chunks just the way you want them. Nice and chunky and coarse as if you bought them. A jar of peanut butter and it didn't even have all the chunks of peanut blended up nicely. It left all the chunks all chunky. Okay, so first things first. It's actually kind of noticeable. The most noticeable thing I, I'm, I'm noticing is the uh, this text right here where it says video, audio. What I want to do is look at what the actual screen res is and then looking at what the font is supposed to be like what 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 resolution for this font would maximize the number of pixels that are actually displayed on screen so we can take a little screenshot it's not the right button for screenshots i guess we can take a little screenshot ha <laughs> ha gotcha screenshotted captured the soul of this button just crash what's gone you know i added a whole bunch of new code that may have caused things to crash right there well we're gonna go ahead and force quit it then and we're gonna get photoshop open okay so what i need to do is work out a method for determining the maximum pixel size that we can get for a font hey sushi gamers what's up and welcome how you doing my friend so first thing we can get this screenshot open okay so what i'd like to do is make this font maximized in its size yeah i'm real good man thanks for asking okay so what's what if we just changed all those fonts to the extra large font to start with let's see what happens oh yeah okay so that's in menu settings ah okay we really don't have access to menu settings right now or i mean it's not in the quick mode quick jumps right now. Aye. You mean I have to actually manually look this up? Okay, there we go. Now this font we've chosen is looks like the default. So we're going to set the font to C font extra large. Probably need to modify some other things, but that's going to be the basics of it, right? So our goal here is to enlarge in every single font to its maximum size that we can fit in the exact same amount of actual screen real estate. So we're gonna be taking like a font like this and we want our font to fit in that same exact box, right? Like we want it to be the same height, but just use more pixels. We wanna actually use all the pixels we, we have uh, at this resolution. Right now, there's a lot of pixels we're not using. Like, if we zoom in enough, we can see that, like, every pixel is actually four pixels wide. So, that's... We could we can get four times more pixels in here, and it would look four times as crisp and nice with this font here. That's our goal. So, we want, in our final output, we want the height of these to be about 48 pixels. Let's see if that works. All right. It worked, but... It also messed things up because it's not using the right camera. So our M dot font camera needs to be view. I don't know if get font camera is the right camera for that because that returns FBO UI, but we want default camera. Okay, so if we use the default camera, see how that looks. And also we're gonna need to change the font size, which I think can you can change. Yeah, you can actually change that per menu choice. So we'll have 
Let's give it a, a random shot here. Let's see. Uh, uh, we need to actually, we got spacing, pause, size. I don't know if that's actually fonts. That's I don't think that's font size. So there's this function called menu create, which goes through each font, reach through each choice, creates a font. Oh, yeah, we have a const stop font scale. Okay, so we want to create our own font. I think that means we can get rid of that. So let's do auto font equals font, get C font extra large, and then font dot scale. I'm not sure. I think maybe 0 0.5 might be about right. We'll see. And then for each one of these choices, set the font manually. This is actually pretty close, but for some reason it's off in its height. It might be because we're scaling the font down. Hey, Space my name. Man, I've been good. How about you, man? How you been? I had a really great weekend this weekend going to a lake called Timothy Lake with my girlfriend. We went swimming and super fun. Okay, a couple things. We want to be at Z0 so it loads faster. And we don't want this pixel UI. It's for some reason it hasn't saved that setting. Okay, so we did take a screenshot though. Let's get that open. And how many pixels tall is this? Wow, it's just about right. We were shooting for 48 pixels and we got 46. That's good. Okay, so we just need to get it so it's actually in the right position. For some reason, it's scaling the font down, but not putting it in the right place for some re some odd reason. Oh, I think it might be because of how it's aligned, but fixing it might be quite the job. What we really want to do is create an individual font that is exactly the right number of pixels for each situation. So if this so this this font will have its own exact font size. Oh, I wonder if this worked. So we actually are doing one to one pixels. Oh, yeah, yeah, check it out. We got one pixel is one pixel now. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, development's going really good. Yeah, working on so multiplayer is I'd say about 80% finished. There's well, more like maybe 60 to 80%. I'm not exactly quite sure there. So that's coming soon. Um, and then I'm also working on a whole bunch of other fun, creative single player stuff, like more enemies, more bosses, more relics, all that super fun stuff. Right now though, we're working on UI improvements, which will kind of generally improve everything. Hey, hello, Evac Alfie. What up and welcome. Okay, so what's next? We want to, let's try and use an exactly sized font for that. So we want, there's a place where we register all our fonts. I think it's in systems.cpp and systems.h. Yeah, yeah. We got these, all these fonts we can res register. So let's do, let's just do a font called C font new for now. And that's going to be font 11. Yeah, I know. I can't wait to make that new boss. All those new enemies. That's oh, single player creative stuff is so fun and easy to make compared to multiplayer. Oh man, multiplayer is kind of a, quite the challenge. Evac, you're lurking around. Oh, hey, thanks, man. I don't think I need any Twitch custom graphics though. I'm just a humble developer. I don't, I'm not, I don't really have all the buttons and stuff for the custom graphics for Twitch. Thanks, man. I appreciate it though. Uh, okay. So we've got this font to register it. We're going to register this new font called new. <laughs> oh, so wait, we have extra large is already one eighth the size. I think new is probably going to be similar. Let's say our font is F. We're going to use the new font now and we don't want to scale it. Okay. So by running it right now, what we're trying to do is establish, establish a new font. And our goal is to get that font to be the exact pixel size for the screen resolution. So we're basically using as many pixels as we can instead of having to scale things up. It's weird. Didn't work. Or maybe it didn't load the new font. We've got this art fonts new dot font and we've got new dot ping open up uh that art font new dot font it does appear to be loading everything fine i mean wait it did it actually load this oh do we actually have the assets created for it assets textures new star yeah we got that okay it should be able to load this new font oh oh did i register it correctly uh I forgot, oh, okay. I forgot something pretty important here. We got to assign it to that new code there. Five minutes remain. Good. Okay, we're using the new font. Now we just need to make the new font a little smaller. So if we were to use 1.0 right here, probably just be gigantic. You think it's too big? <laughs> I think it's a little bit too big too. How about that? Is that too big? I don't know. I think it's just about right now. Yeah, I think I'll leave it just like this. It's a bit small. Yeah, it's a bit small. It might make maybe just a little bit bigger. We'll make this just a little bit bigger. I'm really tempted to. <laughs> okay, so good. We've got this now at a, a scale of 1.0 right that our that's our goal we want these fonts to be scaled to be exactly 1.0 and appear as large as exactly as large as we need them to be on screen so that we're just be getting the perfect pixel resolution might be hard to read on 8k displays yeah 
Well, okay, so on my old computer here, I have an old 32-bit Mac OS here. It's like, which one is this? About this Mac. Mojave, that's right. I've got Mac OS Mojave over here, and it's got this old piece of software called BM Glyph, and I can export fonts. Um, okay, so what we, what we just figured out is that we want something to be 16 times smaller in its font size to be this particular font for this new font we want here. So 16 times smaller. And this is currently where are we at for size. There's the oh font size 136. Okay, so 136 divided by 16, 8.5, maybe 8.0. Two minutes remain. See, can we do 8.5 on this? No, oh, it looks like you can. No, it scales it down to eight. Okay, that's fine. All right, this is really smaller, <laughs> a lot smaller is that actually working kind of small looking to me okay whatever let's give this a shot we're gonna publish this into art fonts called the new fonts publish done okay we shouldn't need to do anything else really except for maybe change this line height from 60 probably way too much yeah for some it is it does appear to be about the right size but for some reason it the font i just exported is really weirdly chunky i don't know what happened there i understand that it's drop shadow would be like that like it's got a weird drop shadow oh uh, maybe the okay let's play with a couple things i think the line height has something to do with it technically that should be divided by 16 but that's not gonna be right we want this to be maybe i don't know let's just guess 12 there and let's start by checking this thing so it doesn't have a huge drop shadow or like the drop shadow isn't so far away there's our texture color shaded material shadow oh there we go we want our shadow to be only one one or two pixels oh no i pressed the save button and it's not liking it okay let's publish that publish okay we tried two different things there we changed the line height variable i don't know if that's the right we'll see and then we also changed where the where the actual text shadow is being offset to so weird how it just really messed this whole font up by making it a scale of 1.0 huh let's take a screenshot of that though and see about what height that is okay so it's exactly the right height that's good we could actually open up the outputted font oh uh, yeah okay that's obviously why oh i get it i get it so it's scaling things to 1.0 but that's based on based on the the virtual resolution of my games my games artwork not the actual screen resolution so for example my screen is something like 3000 pixels wide i don't know exactly but the game is actually only 400 pixels wide so it's that's what we're looking at right here. If I set a scale of 1.0 to my font, it's actually scaling the height in as if it were 400 pixels wide or 260-ish pixels tall. So that's not good. We don't want that. So indeed, we do want to use that technique where we create a much bigger font and then we scale it down for the resolution we're currently at. So I need to kind of undo the two things I just did here. So we want to go back to a font size of 136. And I think we're just going to have to make it so the code for the menu where it creates menu choices it has to be smarter about where it places the alignment of fonts okay i've got that re-exported now and we should be able to refresh this file oh where did the revert command go to in photoshop edit is it edit revert oh man photoshop used to have a, a command called oh there it is revert i guess you can't if you're if you haven't made any changes all right so new dot ping there there's our new that was a second ago okay so we do want this to be 0 0.1 125 actually we want it to be 0675 and this needs to be 60 or maybe 30 hold on what if this is 30 let's run that oh it worked all we had to do was set the font size or set the line height awesome okay so my previous goal when i started the stream was to get fonts to be perfectly sized so that they were exactly right at 1.0 scale. But that was the wrong, wrong method strategy because that caused, I didn't realize that we need, we have this sort of, we have the, the virtual size of my game's world and pixels. I mean, then we have the actual screen size and those are two different, completely different things. The screen size is way bigger than the, the game's actually virtual size. So 
what we've got to do is make fonts really big, like bigger than we even need on like an 8K display, right? And then scale them down to the game's current resolution, just like the technique I'm already using. That was the right technique to use. That actually creates these really nice, crisp looking fonts. So now that we know that, all I got to do is create, gosh, I don't need to create a whole bunch of fonts. I just need to create one font and use it wherever I need. So, so the next step is to create a single font that replaces the large font. What's this next argument here? We got character height and then line spacing. Okay, so this is 36 is the character height, eight is the line spacing. Everything is eight here for all these. We'll leave that as it, as it is for now. Okay, let's see what this looks like. Now we're changing every single font in the whole game to use this new font, which is guaranteed not gonna be ideal, but I think we can figure this all out. What we need eventually is a custom built font that looks really, really good and that can basically be scaled to any resolution that we need. That's just way bigger than whatever we need. And even like, an, basically we need to make it big enough for an 8K display and then scale it down to <laughs> whatever we need. Okay, this is crazy. What happened? This is, this is really great. Maybe we'll just leave it. <laughs> Some of these things look right. Like this font is actually correct, except for that it's not using the right font camera. Okay, everything else though is, is all totally messed up. Oh, uh, because they all use really custom, really custom fonts or custom font scales. So yeah, everything that's here on the UI uses a custom font scale. And because we just changed the, ov the overall scale of the font, everything is looking wrong here. So we need to custom dial in every single one of these individual usages of this font okay so first question i have is is my is this font this let's say we're just going to use this extra large font maybe this extra large font like is it big enough for an 8k display that's the first question okay so how would i figure that out if i set a font if i draw like let's say i put things in this menu and i set their font scale to be 1.0 this is a 4k display so if i look at things in this menu and it's more than twice as big as it needs to be, then we know that it's going to be big enough for an 8K display. It's so weird, why is it exactly the same? Oh, did I forget something? We're using font new. Oh, I commented out for font new, that's why. Oh, we gotta use that. We need to use this buddy right here. Okay, that should be better. Perfect. Okay, I think we can all say that this is more than twice as big as we need, right? If we're about twice as big as we need, this is, this is beyond that. We can take a little screenshot anyways though. Okay, let's approximate how big that is. Is this big enough? Well, let's see. Okay, so we need a font size that's about 48 pixels tall, but this is roughly, I mean, roughly 750 pixels tall. This is so big. I mean, just to put that in perspective, if it's 750 pixels and we only need 48, that's 15 times bigger than we need. So we can do not only an 8K display, that would be twice as big. Okay, so wait, what's four, 4K times about 15? We could do a 60K display. Oh my God, this is so future-proof. I love it. We won't have to edit this game for years. Maybe decades. When are we going to have 60K displays, man? I'm so tired of my 4K. It's just like, doesn't even look that good at all anymore. I need a 60K display. Jeez, I'm like living in the dark ages here. Okay, so great. We know that our font is about plenty big enough. It's freaking ridiculously huge. And when we set it to be 0 0.675, we do have the right scale when we're using it in the menus. So in menus, we definitely wanna change everything so that it's using a font camera that is the default camera. I think, I think there's a thing called default camera. Yeah, there is. Is there a default? Yeah, there's a default. So the camera, uh, the font camera is always view get font camera. Ah, I got an idea. So right now we don't have, we can change the default camera for Wraith Binder. So we've got this layer of code called KitFu and KitFu is not letting us change default font camera. So we wanna, we wanna change this so we do have a default font camera and this can be edited by our game Wraith Binder and this will be, create some more future proofness. So default font camera, good stuff. All right, now menu cons default font camera is gonna be view get default camera. All right, so there. Now we've got it so it's always using, I just realized that at, if we set up a pixel UI, we don't need that, but that's okay. It's not really like saving us very much. It's not, it's not gonna be that much more efficient if we make a make it use a more efficient pixel buffer for frame buffer for our pixel UI. I mean, it would save a little bit of speed, I guess. Whoa, loader. 
Okay, I am working on some back some code that I've kind of got set to the side right now. And it looks like that code just messed up and caused the game to crash on load. I'm gonna take note of that in my mentals, my my mind palace, taking note of such bug in my mind palace. Okay, great. Everything's looking out uh, as it was before. Okay, good, check it out. This is what we wanted to see. We want to see every every single menu using these big, super bigger fonts. Ridiculous, I know, it's totally ridiculous, but uh, we're working on it. Okay, so next thing, let's get them the font height to be about right or the line height so instead of 36 maybe it's the old one was 18 let's see what this looks like at 18. huh doesn't quite work yet for some reason when we change the font the line height well like previously we changed the line height and it changed the alignment of the the menu's font so the things looked okay but right now we just changed the line height and nothing nothing changed didn't work okay what about this we're gonna set our font scale for the new font to not just be 1.0 but to trust whatever font scale is given to us and then we're gonna use this font all over in this in this single menu and and we know that this thing has, we can control its font height right here, or its character height, line height, whatever, right here with this number. So if we can control this with this number, and then this one doesn't work with this number, then it has something to do with the way we're using default fonts. Interesting. This does indeed work. It's really cool. It gets, it's just about aligned correctly. What if we change this to be like 18? What does that look like? I think that's supposed to be 36, not 18. But if it's, if what I'm thinking is correct, then, then it's going to push that font a little too high. Oh, uh, that didn't change anything. That's very interesting. Okay, maybe I was wrong about this. So if I set this back to 60, does nothing change? Oh, nothing changes. Okay, so that number doesn't affect anything, it seems like. Okay, so it's still quite interesting that this thing, because it has a, its own custom font, works and works nicely, but then everything else doesn't, right? We're just getting the font called new font, and then every single one of these choices, we set that custom font. Okay, I'm curious about these two lines of code right here. We're setting the font dot scale. Wait a second, no, that wouldn't affect anything. It sh that shouldn't that shouldn't be the right thing to do because what we're trying to do is just change the vertical alignment of the text to be right. Yeah, nothing nothing changed there. Okay, so our goal is to get this the vertical alignment of these bigger fonts to be correct. So where it says continue and it's got that triangle next to the continue, the continue should be moved upward so that it's aligned so it's centered vertically with that triangle. That's where that's a about where all these fonts should be and when we go into this menu you see it's closer it's like a, it's about right where it's just about at the right position but then when we go into any other menu it doesn't work it's back to how it was because in this menu right here we're using a custom font and everything else we're using the default font so for some reason it has something to do with the default font oh we do have a label pause i wonder if it's this right here this set position 2d okay i probably am wasting too much time on this one thing here i can figure out the exact alignment of menu stuff later the overall the bigger picture is that we've got got the right font we just want, yeah, that didn't change that either. Okay, that's all right. Let's start getting these other fonts to look good. Okay, so one thing actually, I'm, I'm changing my mind. I think I do want to make it so we're using a slightly smaller font. Like maybe we can use a font that is good enough for like a 60K display. Sorry, not a 60K, but like a 16K display. So we're, really, we're going up like one more generation in displays, which we, do we even have that right now? Do we have a thing, such a thing as a 60K dis, or a 16K display? Wow, we do. Whoa, it happened this May. World's first 110 inch 16K TV. Holy crap. The resolution on this thing is 15,000 pixels by 8,000 pixels. Okay, that was this May. So maybe we should go 32K. All right, eight pixels. A font size of eight times 32 would be 256. That's that's not what we want though. It's divided by, so 32 divided by four is eight. So eight times eight is 64. So a font size of 64 would be about right. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to start using the new dot font and this is going to be set 1 16th. We're going to go from 60 down to 32. So we're going to make this, this is going to be 125. And over in my little BM Glyph app over here, we're going to export a font that is instead of 136, we're going to try 64. And we might as well get the right font. I'm not sure if I have, I have that font though. Um, I think it would, might be in streams, posts, not nah, not there okay i don't know what that font was that i wanted to use right now uh, 
Uh, oh, wait a minute. Hold on a second. I think I can figure it out. Okay, so I have this I have this thing in hypermedium team event cover. Here it is, this font right here. Lavello. See, do I have Lavello on this computer already? No, I do not. There's an application called font book. There it is. Fonts, maybe? All fonts. I don't know. Show and finder. That's what I'm talking about. Nat library fonts. That's what I'm talking about. All right, so Lavello Black. We're gonna copy this to the rate finder folder. And then we can install it on this other Mac computer. Over here, we're gonna get the power wraith binder, fellow black, all that. And we're gonna install, let's install the other ones too. Okay, we got that font installed, that font installed, Lavello's installed, Che Guevara. Okay, we got some fonts installed, great. All right, so we want Lavello font size 64, and we don't need any, we can optimize things later for this font. Use kernings, we got a shadow of eight pixels. That's probably wrong, we want that to be four pixels now. Okay, we're gonna publish this as new. All right, see if that's about the right size. So we're gonna use, the new font we want to be 12560. In this menu, we want to enable this font scale to be 1.0, and we're going to double check the height. Just we're going to make sure that our math is correct, such that we could multiply the screen size by four and still have a font that's perfectly crisp. So in, in other words, right now we're on a 4K display. If we were on an 8K, a 16K, or even a 32K display, which is not even a thing yet, it would still be just as crisp of a font. But if we were to go all the way to 64K font, oh man, we're gonna start seeing a little bit of pixelation. What's with that? Interesting. It's actually aligned vertically in the correct way. Okay, let's take a screenshot of this. Okay, so our approximate font size here is 378, and we want it to be 48 times four, which would be 192. Is that right? We're aiming for a 32K display. Divided by four, it would be, of course, eight. Oh, times eight. So 48 times eight, is that right? 384. And this is about 376. That's about right. Close enough. Maybe we could do 65 pixels. We're not going to worry about it, though. This is awesome. Okay, we have a font that's about right for up to a 32K display, which is more than we can currently even imagine right now. Play around with a couple other fonts, though, because I, the width of this font is not quite to my liking. Let's see what that font looks like. Hmm. Also, it's not that wide, especially compared to what it was before. Maybe that's because of width. Let's play around some more. Bello. Here's another font. Ooh, that one's really packed in width-wise. Okay, I like, I like the first one, but maybe a little wider. So we've got right here, we've got a space width of 19. What if we had a space width of 28? Does that even change anything? Let's find out. Publishing this, we're going to see what it looks like. Good stuff. I noticed it rebuilt our font that time. Every every time it, it builds, it's checking if it needs to update any of its assets, and it's always updating our new uh, font. Oops. I can't tell if that actually changed the X advances. That, that ampersand symbol is really weird how it's like way lower than everything around it. Same thing with the other characters like that. Funky looking. You're re reading the ampersand as it's quieter. Like, I'm just a quiet percent. I don't want to be too loud. Okay, I want some more X spacing though. Between, I want the more spacing between the letters. Oh yeah, it's a safe, it's a soft amp ampersand. It's a, it's a polite ampersand. Okay, this is not yet giving us the X advance I was thinking of. What's what, what? Okay, I set the space width that time 28 instead of 19. Let's do something, something ridiculous. Let's set the space width to 60 and see if it's doing anything at all. Publish that. I just want there to be more space between each letter. Yeah, that's not working at all. Hmm. Let's see what this is actually doing to the font file. So we're gonna look at we're looking at the file called new.font and take a look at I don't know what any of these letter IDs mean, but we can take a look at like for example, uh, I did. I think it may maybe it changed this one. This one is sixty, but this one's eighteen. So what's what do we what happens if we change this back to like thirty something else, like thirty three? Publish done. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That just changed it. All it did was it changed this one letter right there. I think that's the space. Oh, this is probably the space character. Oh my gosh. Okay, I get what that's doing then. Fonts, extra large dot font. Oh, I don't have this. I don't know. I don't know what any of these mean either. How about art fonts large dot. Yeah, yeah. ID 32 is the space character. Okay, so all that's doing if I change the space width, it's only changing the width of the space character, not anything else. So it's not adding any 
extra X advance, but I think I do have a, a custom utility I can write, or I have written that will, that can change all these X advances. So what I'm talking about is this, this little number right here, this X advance is the amount of space it puts between each character. I want that to be bigger and I can do that with a custom utility I've written. So, okay, I'm gonna take a break, be right back. Okay, person, we're continuing our quest to have crispier fonts, higher resolution fonts. Here we go. We got the next thing we're going to do. We want to change the X spacing between our letters. So we want something talking about the distance right here. We want to change how much space there is between each letter. And we also want to play. I want to start playing with the like when we're in animate mini map, there's a font size where we. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. We want to look at something like the clock label, the feed, yeah, any one of these. I think it's the clock label we're talking about. Clock label create with font. OK, so font is our there we go. Our font is either small two or large oh small two if we're pixely silly okay so we're using a scale of 0.3 on our font and that's obviously too big hold on so 0.3 we're, we need to multiply this by something smaller i think let's try a quarter of the size hold on the other font was 18 and then we were like 136 if no six four it's pr roughly a yeah roughly a quarter of the size okay that might work and then the next thing we want to do is also get this utility i've written the code open for that i think that's called font tool.cpp yeah here it is do font spacing this is what i'm talking about this is the we already had it set up okay so this is where it converts all the lines and it looks for x advance and it adds some it takes the value adds in some spacing so spacing is do font spacing yeah Hey, this is the thing I wanted. Okay, so we want this to be do font spacing. And for the new font, we want to have some spacing of plus four. Start with four. And let's get this open in Xcode. We're, we're going to run this uh, font tool in Xcode. Close out Wraith Binder just in case we've got some sub projects there open that we want to use with this font tool. And we're in the art project font tool, font tool. Xcode proj. Boop, 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 boop. All right. So we got uh, the font tool build failed. Uh, we got to define a platform. Who needs a platform? Okay. Uh, that's in build preprocessor statements for our target font tool. It's been a while since I built this project. I've changed the way that KitFu works to make it force you to set a platform. Here we go. Preprocessor macros. Got our multiple values. And we've also got, no, uh, oops. We want inherited. Yeah, that's what we want. Okay. We've got inherited and and platform Mac. Uh, let's see if it likes it now. Still doesn't like it. it. Why does it have to link with net? We don't need net nor input. Okay, so this is net get ping is used where? Oh gosh, it's been a while since I compiled all these projects and things have changed. Aha, this is used in tick sleep ready delta. Sleep ready delta. Okay, here. See if we can figure out this whole. You know what? Let's just comment this method out for the for the nonce. Okay, so we couldn't link. Oh, hold on a second. What am I thinking? We we'll just do this there. Now we can compile Wraith Binder as well. Okay, so I need what I need to do is think up a way that I can compile this code for Wraith Binder and not and still have tick.cpp for Kitfu's core so that we can use it here in this project like font tool. Boom! It compiled fine that time. Direct act, whatever. I'm I'm not gonna worry about the warnings. Okay, we're running it and it wrote the new font okay that's cool i think we had an x advantage of 18 right here so that looks bigger Let's see if that works okay so we're checking two things when we run it now we're checking for a little more x spacing or or what do you call it character spacing between the spacing between characters in the fonts and also the size of the font for the mini map okay so the font size for the mini map is about right yeah we do need a little more spacing all right let's, let's run that again okay so now we've got a spacing for this character to be 22 it'd be nice actually if it if new line put on let's add a little something to this we want to put the actual whatever character this actually is so that would be like words I'm not sure which word it is, but we'll figure that out in a second. And this should be a percent S. Okay, so words, that's for the ID. So words, this would be zero. This would be one. Hey, I guess the right word. Think. So if we take that to be, that would be ID equals. Ah, so we can, I got this. So our character. So if pair zero equals ID, then our character equals math parse I pair one. So we're just assigning the character value of this line. 
And then at the end, we can actually put a little comment on each line. So this will this will basically take, do this where it goes boop, and it would say the, the actual character value. So that wouldn't work for that one. But if this were character A, it would just do something like that. So is that kind of how I want that format? Let's see, A, R, fonts, large dot font. Yeah, yeah, there's a space and then a semicolon and then a, yeah. We could even go one step further and say if C equals a new line character, no, a tab character, or no, sorry, it's either one of these space. If it's a space character, then we can just put new line plus equals string space. Else, if it's a tab character, tab. Else, do that. Okay, I like it. Oh, we don't need to compile anything. We just need to run this project again. Go. Nice. Okay, it, it definitely added those, and it looks like it changed our X advance a little bit more. We probably want to make this a little smart though so the care so the the next time it does that it doesn't see how i that one line right there we already had a semicolon space a it added two semicolon two comments essentially so we want to make it so if it ex has an existing comment it just ignores that that's a little better so now we've increased the character facing by eight i think we could do a little more though maybe a total of 12. so what we're going to do is we're going to create another vector called new words and each time we split up some a line into words clear the new words and and we only add, create another, like a Boolean, like has comment equals false. And then if word, e if word equals just a semicolon, then has comment equals false. Sorry, has comment equals true. And if not has comment, then we can push back into the new words. So when we join the new lines back together, we're using new words. Okay, so we've got the same thing where we're just adding four again to the X spacing. And this time we will ignore existing comments in our font tool. So we ran it. We, no, we sorry, we built it. Let's run it. Okay, there we ran it. Now let's look at our font. Nice. All right, now we got an X advance of 26 here for this exclamation point. And look at this. It actually got rid of our old extra comment. It used to look like this. And it got rid of that extra comment and just gave us some nice comments. So this is really great. Our font tool, we've upgraded everything about our font tool. I love this. Okay, so we're, oh, it, added a, it added a comment to every single line. No, oh, whatever. Let's see if it still works. I still feel like our X advance is not too, it's not very much. I wonder if it's being changed depending on kernings. It probably is depending on kernings. Like here at the end, it has all these extra kerning things. And these change how much kerning, a kerning is how much it advances depending on previous letter and the letter following it. Okay, so what time is it now? Oh, past the time. It's past the time. Oh my God. Oh my God. Okay, well, let's recap. Let's recap what we did on today's stream. I've been working on the UI in general. I want things to be that next notch up in how high quality this game looks at its first glance. You look at the game and go, wow, it looks higher quality than it did before. Or if you see it for the first time, you're like, man, I, li I like the look of this game. It looks pretty cool. Now, granted, things look pretty weird right now because our fonts have gone way too big, especially the all these fonts on the bottom of the screen right here. But I'm still trying to dial all that in. What we what we're going to eventually see is something kind of like this, where this is a really nice crisp font. Let's take a screenshot of that. Actually, we can compare that outside of the game. So this is kind of what it like what used to look like before. No, that's not what it used to look like before. Do we have any before shots? Oh, we have we have no before shots. Okay, I messed up there. Hold on. Are we sure about that? What's this? No, there we go. Yeah, that's what it used to look like. Okay, there we go. So that's what it used to look like. And let's get the what it looks like now. Okay, so you can see these old fonts. We're using, that's like actually four pixels wide right there. This is a pretty pixelated font. And this newer font is higher quality, less pixelated, right? We're now we're using exactly one pixel for every, every, every font pixel corresponds to one screen pixel so it just looks a little bit higher quality a little bit sharper and crisper and here every font pixel corresponds to four screen pixels so we get a much chunkier look to our font and that's what i'm trying to avoid right i want to i want a nicer look to the font so I need to find what's what's next. The next things to do with this are to find the right font. So this is a custom pixel art font that I created, and I want something that's close to that. And this is this is pretty close, but well, maybe I can find something even better. And then I've got to go and get the shadows just right. So right now we we have a, a little bit of shadows going on, but if you look at something like the the letter V, 
there's a little bit of a gap between the top of the V and the and the or the background V and the foreground V. We would want this to look more like that, where it fills in that gap on both sides of the V. So I can do that with a custom. I can do that by importing it into Photoshop and playing around with this actual raw new ping file right here. I can look at this and, you know, like, for example, you can go to this Y letter right here and, you know, fill that in so that it looks much better. That's another thing I could do. And then also I need to play with kernings. So kernings are these things that determine the amount of space between letters depending on the actual letter. So if there's a Y followed by a V or there's a good example, an A followed by a V. If you have the letter A and it's followed by a V, you can actually change the kerning so that it actually moves, the, it changes the X spacing depending on its previous letter. So that, it needs to be more accurate. So there's this this tool I'm using called BM Glyph, actually outputs the correct kernings, but the engine I've written or based my game on is called Cocos 2DX and it's not using, it's not correct in its algorithm about how it determines kernings. So I need to look at that algorithm and, and correct that. It's one more thing I gotta do. But all these little things will add up to make things look better. So eventually we'll have a really nice, crisp looking font in the game everywhere you look, even even for things like this, where it's sort of a crispier, chunkier font. If you really do want that crispier, chunkier font, all you gotta do is go into settings, go to video and change it to a pixel UI and everything can be all pixely as you want. But I, I want the higher res font, the default font to just be as high res as possible. So that's why we got to avoid things like this where we've got chunkier pixels appearing for uh, a font like this one. So it'll all look good in a, in a little bit. All right, hey, person. So you've been watching me. I'm, I'm Wizard Foo. I'm making this game called Wraithfinder. It's a roguelite with um, Metroidvania elements and online co-op. So check it out. Wishlist it. It's on, it's on Steam. And uh, there'll be another beta coming soon where you can play this and possibly a demo soon too. So thanks for watching my stream. I'm, I'll be back next Wednesday and I'll see y'all later. Thanks for watching.